So this is a retrospective analysis of the patients with metastatic melanoma who were treated on Keynote 1, 2, and 6. They were given pembrolizumab 3 milligrams per kilogram or 10 milligrams per kilogram. And uh, this is looking at the patients who came on to study with uh, stable brain metastases in comparison to those who came on study without brain metastases. This is a follow-up to show the toxicities that we're seeing, the tolerability, um, progression-free survival, and overall survival of these patients. Uh, this is the first time we're looking at this subset of patients. Uh, it's an important uh, part of this uh, evaluation for our metastatic melanoma patients in order to show what this trial did is it showed that the patients who came on study with brain metastases did just as well as those who didn't. Now these were patients who had to have had definitive therapy for their brain metastases showing stability for four weeks and then they were allowed onto the trial. But when you look at the progression-free survival and overall survival curves in response, what you're seeing is similarities equivalent in both arms. Uh, again, uh, the other thing that you're seeing here is that the toxicities were similar. Aside from some CNS toxicities that were increased, there was no other increase in toxicities. Uh, for us, as investigators who take care of patients with metastatic melanoma, this is yet another confirmation that immunotherapy can be used in these patients without concerns for significant central nervous system toxicity and an indication that these drugs work in the central nervous system. So this data on the heels of the most recent data is presented uh, by other investigators like Taubi and Long and Davies show that not only are the targeted therapies efficacious for our patients with metastatic melanoma and central nervous system metastases, but the immunotherapies are tolerable and are efficacious.